Good morning, everyone, and thank you for starting your day out with me. I'm Jenna Stauffer. All right, love is in the air because it is that time of year again. Valentine's Day is just around the corner. There is a wonderful place to spend your Valentine's Day at this year in Key West. I'll have details for you later on in the show. But first, this morning, I'm going to spend some time talking with clinical psychologist Dr. Stephen Ragusia. He's going to talk with us about those two things that flow with Valentine's Day, and that, of course, is love and marriage. Marriage. Dr. Agusia, thank you for being back on. It's Glad been a be while. Here. It's been a while since you've been back. Talk with us, though, about a happy subject today: love and marriage. Love and marriage. Um, well, it's happy for some and not happy for everybody. <laughs> That's true. You know. That's true. Um, I guess I'm going to try and approach it two ways. Um, the first way, sort of scientifically. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, when we look at the basis for love, um, particularly falling in love. What, what you're looking at is uh, significant biochemical changes that take place in the human body. Mm -hmm. um, and they are different depending upon which kind of love you're talking about. Mm -hmm. um, I have a, a slide which I think you'll probably put up and the audience can see this. Um, and what it shows is that um, when you're in a state of attraction to somebody, what happens is that there's an increase in neurotransmitters like dopamine and norepinephrine and serotonin. And what those attractants do is they tend to increase our heart rate, decrease our appetite, make us sleep less, mm -hmm. things like that. Mm -hmm. And we all know, we recognize those sensations from when we've been attracted to people. Mm -hmm. And that combination of chemicals is different from the combination of chemicals that happens when we are experiencing lust. Okay. And we all know what lust feels like. Right. Or at least you and I do. Not everybody does. Mm -hmm. um, what's true is that people experience all emotions at, at different levels and gradations so that there are people who don't feel very deeply and don't feel very much. And then there are other people like most Italians, who feel too much, okay, <laughs> like me. Um, and, and what happens with lust is there's a massive increase of testosterone and estrogen, okay? Now, <clears throat> estrogen and testosterone are found in both sexes. And in women, um, both of them are more important than in men. In men, the testosterone is more important for lust, but for women, um, not only is the estrogen critical, but so is testosterone. With a little bit of testosterone, w women feel more passionately. Really? Yeah, and I their sexual know. attractiveness is enhanced. Mm -hmm. um, uh, yeah, I can tell you stories about that. Right <laughs> and and uh, all of that is different from what we experience when we feel attached to somebody. And the attachment kind of love can come from uh, or, or can uh, uh, be related to, first of all, uh, romantic love, but it can also be related to our children. Um, and with this kind of love, whether it's long-term commitment in our romantic relationship or parent-child love, then what we see is an increase in vasopressin and oxytocin. Um, oxytocin is important with uh, pregnant women, uh, I'm sorry, uh, women who've been pregnant and just have a baby, and that oxytocin really helps with the bond with the baby. Mm -hmm. um, and um, uh, oxytocin is produced when women nurse, and it's one of the things that helps them bond with the infant that's nursing off them, their child. Um, so at any rate, so what you see is you've got different chemicals that are zooming around the body in different proportions for different kinds of romance. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. So your body really is changing so much. It is. That's right. Mm -hmm. And and part of the problem is sometimes we have a mismatch. Mm -hmm. You know, somebody's got more of this kind of chemical going on, and mm -hmm. somebody's got a different kind of chemical going on. Mm -hmm. And uh, it may take a while as we go through dating relationships before we find somebody who's at the same place we are. Right. right. You know, um, there's a guy who wrote a book um, many years ago called The Art of Loving. His name was Eric Frome. And one of the things that Fromm did was he talked about the fact that um, uh, if you look at love scientifically, okay, he said it's an art essentially. Mm -hmm. And um, 
it's about sacrifice and sharing and caring and devotion. And one of the principal points Fro made in that book was, he said, because of that, make sure the people that you choose to hang around with are loving people. Very true. Because if you have to make yourself vulnerable mm -hmm. and devoted and caring, mm -hmm. if you do that with the wrong people, they'll take advantage of you, mm -hmm. won't treat you well, mm -hmm. hurt you very badly maybe, mm -hmm. and you won't be very good at loving anymore because mm -hmm. you'll be too wounded. Mm -hmm. okay? You'll be too hurt to move on. And we have to take a quick break right now, but we're going to talk more about love and marriage when we return from this commercial break. Stay with us.